thanks everyone for coming. Um, I'd just like to give you a little bit of an introduction to this very first piece, um, Le Gend by Henriette Renier. It's based on a poem uh, by a French poet, and um, the story of the poem goes a little bit like this. A knight in shining armor is riding on his horse through the forest on his way to meet his fiancée for the wedding. And on his way, he encounters some elves, and they're dancing, and the queen is there, and she invites him to participate and enjoy the festivities. Um, he, however, has more important things to attend to, like his wedding. And he refuses her offer. He, um, he leaves the elves. Um, in her wrath, the queen curses him. And when he finally gets to where he needs to be, he sees this figure in the forest. It is his wife. She has been killed by the queen, who was so upset about uh, the prince not joining the elf celebration. So um, listen for the tragedy. Listen for the running of the horse through the forest with the prince. Um, and I hope you enjoy the show.
from the repertoire list for the um, International Harp Competition in Israel this year. It's one of the big three competitions. Um, it takes place in November in Tel Aviv. So this piece, like all the others, is from that list, and it is the um, Sonata by, Mar by Moran for harp. Thank you. 
Well, I've puzzled a lot about this piece. Um, if you have the text in front of you, you um, might be able to puzzle along with me. It's a, a entitled The Death of St. Narcissus. It's a poem by T.S. Eliot. And St. Narcissus was a, a saint in the Catholic, well, a saint, I can't remember what century now, but pretty early on, like like third or second. And, um, and St. Narcissus had a tricky life, apparently. He was, at some point, did something really awful, and then was, um, uh, what's that word when you're sent out of your city that he says, don't come back here? Exile. And then, and then um, he had some like rebirth in the desert, and then was welcomed back because the three people that testified him against him were burnt and were and like and drowned. And anyway, some some proof came some proof came as to his not having done this awful thing. This is not really helping. But the but but this the, the text of this is about him his sort of uh, experience in the desert, I think, and uh, and and some other schizophrenic voices <laughs> in there too. So. Thank you. Here we go. Come under the shadow of this great rock. Come in, come in under the shadow.
first he was sure that he had been a true Twisting its branches among each other and tangling its roots among each other. Tangling its roots among each other. Theseus was the one who had to go into the labyrinth with the bull, the Minotaur. And, <laughs> and, um, and she was the one who gave him the thread and the sword to, to get out of the, uh, the labyrinth and to defeat the Minotaur. So after this whole labyrinth episode, they fall in love. They go to this island, I like to think of it as the, the honeymoon, and he completely, she like falls asleep, he completely betrays her and leaves, he's gone. 
<laughs> sad, right? So, so I like to think of this piece as kind of a cyclical, metaphoric, backwards interpretation of their relationship. The first movement is Ariadne's dream. And I like to think of it as when she's sleeping, this is while he leaves her, she, there's something not quite right. She's dreaming, it's kind of that in-between, like unconscious, like right when you wake up phase. Something is always like, if you're waking up, something's not right, you wanna be in bed still. But she, there's something not right about this because he's gonna be gone when she wakes up. So um, you'll hear that the harp is tuned a little bit off. So that's kind of like, what's wrong? <laughs> um, but it's right, it's right. And then um, if we move backwards, we move to the, moving forwards, but moving backwards in their story is Dance of the Night Insects. And um, maybe this is before they fall asleep. They're on the island. It's beautiful. It's the tropical paradise. Little fireflies. Just very um, beautiful. And then moving backwards again in their story, Sundance. Maybe this is the heat of their passion. Maybe this is right when they fall in love. Um, you'll notice a lot of banging. <laughs> and then um, the last movement, Theseus and Ariadne. This is when they fall in love. And um, you'll hear that I'm playing with recording of myself. So I like to think of my the recording as one of them, Theseus maybe, and me playing live here as Ariadne maybe. But again, the heart is tuned a little bit off. So there's that foreshadow of something being wrong with their relationship. At least with him, goodness me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so try to think of that as you listen. Um, enjoy your kind of <laughs>
invite my colleagues, um, Brian and Maya and Maya, and Rachel and Rob up. Um, and we'll be performing Debbie C's dances. So while they come up and help me set up, I'll tell you a little bit about. Okay, so uh, here is the story of the Debbie C dances. In the early 1900s, there were two rival heart companies, and one created the forerunner of this, what we call double action pedal harp. And the other was producing um, what they call chromatic harp, and it had three sets of strings and very complicated. Right? Um, so the company that produced the double action harp wanted to advertise this instrument, so they hired Maurice Ravel to compose for the instrument, so a musical advertisement. That's right. So he wrote the introduction in the legroom. Um, for her. And the other company that produced the chromatic harp with three sets of strings was like, we gotta do the same thing. So they hired Debbie C to write um, for their chromatic harp, and he wrote dances. Um, unfortunately, though the Debbie C dances remain one of the premier pieces for harp, the instrument that it was written for does not exist any longer. <laughs> so um, I've heard it, the, the piece referred to as a failed musical advertisement, not because the piece is a failure, but because it didn't do its job exactly, unfortunately. So um, this is the piece that I'm playing is not written for the instrument I'm playing it on. Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think that's all. So thank you so much for coming. Um, we have some refreshments outside after. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you.